and welcome to another episode of Alpha Technics. In this episode I'm going to be mainly talking about again cooling of the engine and how we can improve the efficiency of airflow coming in through the nose, out through the back, reducing engine temperature. Other video which I posted a month ago. Since then we've had some hot weather, we've had temperatures around the mid-20s and I'm starting to experience some new issues which I didn't have before. Again it's cooling but it's the cooling of the engine when I'm sat in traffic. I can just see that temperature gauge rising up above 80, 85, 90, 95 degrees centigrade and so that tells me that when it's only happening in traffic, air flow is reduced. The fans on a manual switch, I know it's on full power. What I'm suggesting here is that potentially that my fan on the radiator has not got enough cooling capacity. It's not drawing enough air in through the mouth of the nose of the car and pushing it through the radiator across the cooling fins. So in this video, I'm going to be doing something which I've fancied doing for a long time actually, and that's replacing the radiator to an aluminium upgraded radiator from the old brass radiator and the fan from a 10 inch fan to a 14 inch fan has been fabricated by a company called Kulex a uh, really great sales engineer on the phone taught me through the process they've even made they've mounted the fan uh, onto the radiator uh, straight out of the box no need to do any mounting and they've created some brackets for it to mount to. So I'm going to remove the fan and the radiator from my Westfield now and I'm going to be looking at the process of installing it on the chassis. So radiator technology has moved on quite a long way since the original brass radiator that's on the car when the car was built. So this car is 1993 so we're looking at almost 30 years old. Aluminium is much more efficient and better at dissipating heat from a hot body, so from the water medium, it's actually 15% more efficient at dissipating the heat. The fan itself fills a much greater area, being 14 inch fan. Nice little feature, these brackets have been welded on here for me. Uh, they spec that at the factory when this is being made. You can have them um, just put through with zip ties if you want to, that's another option. Typical Westfield Pinto, top left, bottom right, as you look at it from the, from the back of the radiator, and the brackets here replicate the brackets on the actual car itself to mount it to the chassis. It's a 72mm core, it's actually got an 80mm wide header to it. Uh, drain plug on the bottom, it is possible to put it upside down and have the drain plug at the top, utilise that as a filler. But what I've got, I've got a head of that tank, it's an expansion tank that allows the water to expand and contract when it's in the coolant system and I have a T-piece that comes off the top hose and goes off to the, the expansion tank. So therefore I don't need a, a fill on here because it's actually on the expansion tank over there. So that's the fan, so it's a 12 volt, of course, a 90 watt fan. I'll have a look now to see what is on my original fan, but I don't think it's that high. So this fan is 14 inch, my original one is uh, 10 inch, so I'm going to get greater capacity airflow through here. Another modification I could do is to put a shroud around here to allow the air channel through here uh, on the exhaust of the fan. just as important to let the, the hot air come off the fins as it is to put, put cold air through the fins from the front. So let's drop the water now and start removing, disassembling the fan, the original fan from the car. Looking at the back of the radiator, you can see the fan just sits behind there, 
below this front chassis member the drain pipe is just down there so I'm going to remove that now I'll be undoing all these brackets here and here removing the top hose and the bottom hose this is the T piece that I was talking about that runs back this little bleed here back to the, the header tank here so I'm going to remove that hose now and drop the water With the water drop now, we can disassemble the radiator. Some people think that the more coolant you have, the better it is. It's actually the reverse. You need more water to coolant. The coolant is really just antifreeze, and the antifreeze just prevents, of course, your coolant system from freezing up if your car's kept overnight in the freezing or winter temperatures. very efficient design having the radiator angled this way. Sometimes you see in race cars that the angled radiator is actually leaning down towards the, the front of the, the road. You'll see that race cars a lot but that was the air to pass through and come up through a vent. To improve the airflow into the nose I've actually would removed the bottom I suppose flange here so cut that out that was sat in there and there's one at the top as well so that gives me another probably 10% extra airflow into the into the nose of the car that's going to improve my cooling capacity and again enhances the overall efficiency of the radiator and the cooling system sometimes now these west fields have air vents on top of their of the bonnet behind the nose cone and actually out the back sides of the actual car itself. That's to improve the air coming off the radiator. So what I might do is I'm going to be looking at potentially just bringing that angle forward so it's more vertical, ideally leaning downwards from the top. I don't think I can do it for this. What I will be doing is putting some more substantial rubber anti-vibration mounts on here. These seem to perish quite badly, they might be the original ones. So there we have it. There's the old radiator with the horns on still. Okay, I've taken the fan off. You can see there that it's got an old rad. What I'll do is put them side by side so we can have a look now. So there's the old 10 inch fan against the 14 inch fan. So you can see I'm going to get a lot more cooling efficiency with that new fan. And uh, this one was, uh, they're, they're quite cheap, they're not that expensive, they're only about 20 pounds. But it's just a, a bigger fan, bigger surface area to get to cool those fins. So I'm hoping it's going to do the job this one and we're going to put this in place now mount it on the car see what it's going to look like with some nice new anti-vibration mounts so I've just finished mounting the radiator onto the mounts that's pretty solid now so the fan fits snugly behind the radiator fins it's really tight against the fins you don't want to lose any air don't, don't an air gap between there to reduce the efficiency and it sits really right onto that cross member across there. These bushes allow that spacing to go on here. With the nose cone on it's really tightly packed. I'm not going to connect the top hose just now, I'm going to start filling from here. I'll get to a point where the water's high in the engine and then connect the, this onto the radiator. So I'm going to be very cautious not to use too much coolant antifreeze in this system. Here I've got three litres to go into it and then I'll top up the rest with, with water. So it'll be about a 50-50 mix to fill the whole system. Oh, the temperature is still very low at the moment. So I want, I'm aiming to try and get this to aim around about 82 to 85 degrees. 